All right, everybody, what is going on? Welcome to another episode of the Full Press Saints Podcast, of course, part of the Full Press Coverage Network. Once again, it is your host, Alec, joined by my man, Dayton. Today was supposed to be a preview of the wide receiver roster going into training camp next week. Um, <laughs> and, of course, uh, some headlines will come up that, you know, require immediate t- conversation. Uh, we'll dive right into that. Uh but first, Dayton, how we uh, how we feeling today, man? Well, feeling all right. I all guess. things considered. All things considered, yeah. Um, I mean, tough news. Bad things come in threes, for sure. And there's been three pieces of bad news for the Saints after that Ram check extension was signed, which was great news. And then three bad things happen and we're still waiting for another one. So it's another day in the life of being a Saints fan, though. We never get a break. Um, it is just frustrating, but overall though, I'm doing pretty great. I mean, obviously it's, it's always good to be alive and be healthy and, and recording this podcast. So I'm excited to talk about it. Uh, obviously <laughs> we will still be doing the wide receiver depth chart, um, breakdown episode, but this news that broke yesterday, plus the news that broke a few days ago, will definitely need more attention than, than the wide receiver depth chart for now. So um, it is, um, it's It's going to be nice to talk about it, to, uh, us to both kind of vent about what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm excited for people to listen about it, and I'm sure everybody has already formed their own opinion about the situation, and I'm sure you all know what we're talking about already. But uh, no, it's, uh, it's going to be both tough and enlightening to discuss what's been going on and Obviously, like I said, it's just frustrating. Another day in the life of a Saints fan. We we never catch a break. Could be worse. It could be over there on Locked On Packers or uh, not Locked On Full Press Packers. Whoa! Oh yeah, there you yeah. go. There you Full go. Press yeah. Packers with Aaron Rodgers, Devonte Adams, all that. Oh yeah. Or like you said, then you tweeted, didn't you say it could be worse? We could be Houston Texans fans. We could be, but then when the whole uh, <laughs> what the whole uh, Packer thing came out, I thought you know what? That's probably yes. worse than being a Texan fan. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I guess right now. Yes. Exactly. But let's before we dive into the biggest news, uh, really quick, let's dive into some of the smaller headlines pertaining to your New Orleans Saints, including uh, Quan Alexander was actually cleared uh, to work out and you know get back into the groove of football things and whatnot. He actually visited the Saints a few days ago. Um, assuming all is well. I, I don't see why they would bring Quan, Quan Alexander back, especially, you know, with Al Anzalone leaving. There's kind of a hole as far as that second linebacker with Damari Davis, so it would make sense to bring Quan back on a cheaper deal. Um, and, of course, the uh, the bigger headlines. Uh, last week, Marcus Williams of the Saints could not agree to a, a long-term extension, so he will play under the franchise tag for this upcoming season as well as David Onyemata. Um, of course, the six-game suspension, obviously a big blow to this team that already lost. Sheldon Rankins, Malcolm Brown in the middle. Now you're going to rely on Malcolm Rhodes, Shy Tuttle, maybe some veteran, a veteran guy you would bring in. But um, <laughs> what are just some of your general thoughts on the slew of news that has come in here recently? Yeah, the Marcus Williams situation is unfortunate but it wasn't too unexpected i mean granted it was unlikely they were going to extend all three of ryan ramchick marcus williams and marshawn Lattimore, who are due for new paydays uh, they got ramchick down made him one of the highest paid tackles and the highest paid right tackle in the league mm-hmm. so check that box off then marcus williams i mean getting the franchise tag was surprising in and of itself um, considering the cap situation the Saints were in when they decided to give him the tag, which is over $10 million for this upcoming season. Obviously, Williams wants to be paid as one of the highest or as one of the top safeties in the league, wants to be one of the highest paid safeties, and I do not blame him at all. It's just the Saints do not have much room to work, and I'm sure it was very hard to negotiate a deal up to that deadline. I mean, yep. if the deadline had been, I'm sure, August or, or right before the season began, I think that there's a really good chance the Saints could have got something done, but the time frame they were given, the amount of money Marcus Williams wants, and the amount of money the Saints are able to kind of shell out with so many things unknown in the upcoming season, 
it's just very tough to coordinate. So I'm not too surprised that a deal didn't get done. I'm obviously disappointed. I want him on the team for the future. But this doesn't mean the Saints can't, you know, retain him and sign him to a new contract this upcoming offseason. They can either franchise tag him again, which if they do, it will be 120% of the top five safety average in the NFL. So essentially, he'll be getting paid as the one of the top two or three safeties in the league if they decide to franchise tag him next offseason. Or they can just sign him to an extension, and we'll see. I mean, if, if he plays as good as he has played this offseason, he's going to command a lot of money. But if he takes a step back, possibly, doesn't play as good, shows some signs of, um, I guess, not, not really decline because he's still so young. But if he's not as good this upcoming season as he has been, there's a chance that they could get him for a much cheaper deal, much better money, uh, which might be good. But yep. hopefully something gets done in the future. I want him on the team. Disappointed but not surprised. Onimata, I'm very surprised. Somewhat disappointed. I mean, yeah, you can't really blame Onimata. He came out and admitted his fault before any reports came out, before anything went down. So credit to him for, you know, clearing the air before anything. He said that him and his team are testing everything that he's been eating to see what it is that he tested positive for because it's just a banned substance. I'm not sure if it's exactly a performance-enhancing drug that it was or anything like that. I think it was just a banned substance that was in a food that he didn't eat. Obviously, that's happened with many players before in the past. Lately, it hasn't really been a thing just because of how often athletes' food is being tested and watched. And just, you know, everybody look it out for them to make sure nothing happens. Because, you know, even if it is a mistake, NFL doesn't care. If you test positive for that stuff, it's gnarly. And six-game suspension, I mean, that is what worries me the most. That's that's over a third of the year. That's almost half of the season without our best defensive tackle. Mm -hmm. And that's after losing Sheldon Rankins, of course, in free agency. So and it's, Malcolm Brown, your best, uh, run, well, your, your best run stuffer. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, I mean, we, we kind of knew we were – letting go of Malcolm Brown one way or the other, but then it's because David Onyemata was the rock in the middle, and then you have Malcolm Roach and Shai Tuttle for, for the support there. Now you don't have Onyemata for the first six games, and, and yeah, Brown and Rankins are both gone now, so, you know, it just handcuffs the team a lot, uh, and it sucks, but it doesn't handcuff them as much as this Michael <laughs> Thomas news, I can tell you that much. Yeah, uh, the tweet from Rappaport yesterday that kind of, Broke everything. Uh, Rapport tweeted out the yeah. Saints star receiver Michael Thomas expected to miss the start of the 2021 season after undergoing surgery to repair the ligaments in his ankle in June. Based on the timing of the surgery and recommended four months of recovery, Thomas could be on the sideline for weeks. Um, and there's just so much to dive into as far as everything that has gone on here. Um, you know, people are asking, why did he wait till June to get this done? Why not wait until? Or why not do it? And you know, right after the Bucks game, um, and simply, well, before this morning, I was gonna give Mike Thomas the benefit of the doubt, and that you know, I trust what he was doing. Maybe he waited to see if the ankle would just heal on its own if he didn't, if he just rested up and tried to try and to try and you know put a whole lot of pressure and weight on it. Ultimately, that could be the thing. Still, we really do not know yet. Um, uh, the article from Pro Football Focus, uh, while I don't like using Pro Football Focus and in particular Mark Florio for a source, especially when it comes to Saints news, um, but uh, he, he's citing Nick Underhill, though, which I trust. So, Nick, I trust Nick very yes. much. So pretty much everything they say in that article is just what Nick Underhill said in New Orleans dot football. So which is the free version. The, right. This exactly. Is a <laughs> there you go. There you go. You're exactly right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so basically, from Nick Hunter's understanding and what he has heard, uh, was that he needed uh, some time to see if the ankle heal on its own, come back for a follow-up visit later on in the summer. Uh, according to Nick Underhill, that second follow-up never happened. So whether it's Mike thought the ankle was healing properly and it wasn't, whether it was the Saints not doing their due diligence checking up on Mike and getting this thing taken care of before... It became a real problem. Um, we just truly do not don't know what went into the process of all the, and why it happened now. But it's happened. Right. It is what it is. The Saints are not going to be without without their star wide receiver for I would imagine at least a good chunk of the season. Safe to say, possibly the entire season is what I'm kind of reading into this. Is it, that there is a possibility. 
Michael Thomas could miss the entire season. There's a very good chance because you got to think about it. He, he messed up the ankle week one last year, right? Opener yes. against the Bucks. Uh, he missed time. Came missed back, like six weeks. Came back, banged it up again right before the playoffs. So the Saints yep. rested him towards the end of the year. Came back for the playoffs because we all knew why Mike came back because it was Drew's last year. He wanted to try mm-hmm. and you know go get the ring and didn't work out ultimately, but. And to go through the wear and tear on that ankle the entire season, and then to you know you you would think to get surgery right after the year would be the right thing to do, but he was told to wait, see how it heals, how it you know how it would act up with rest, um, and ultimately we are here now. Yeah, it's I mean something had to have happened between the surgery in June and yesterday for it to come. I mean. Because it, we we the news broke July twenty third, he got the surgery sometime in June. I'm not sure why we didn't know about this back in June. Right. E- either somebody didn't want this to leak out, and it did, or it's I I I, I just don't know why it just decided to leak July twenty third when the surgery happened in June. Now, according to Nick to Nick Underhill, um, yeah, specialist told Michael Thomas and the team, hey, there is a chance that you can avoid surgery, rest this ankle. We'll see how it looks in a month. So you're supposed to come back in March. He never went back. Now, definitely Michael Thomas is to blame here. I'm, I, before I say anything, I'm not saying Michael Thomas is not to blame. It is his body. It's his ankle. He shouldn't want to be on top of it. And, I'm and, a person... And, and, I mean, if you're an athlete, if there's a chance to rehab and avoid the surgery... Avoid surgery, you wanna, which is what you, I'm... Yeah. Which is what I'm just about to say, because I've never gotten surgery before. Like, like, I've never gone under the knife for anything before. And, you know, it, it, it's kind of intimidating, but I, I don't really have much experience in that. But from what I've heard, yes, avoiding surgery would be nice for athletes. They don't have and, to go under the knife. And, I mean, you know, when you have surgery to repair, in, in Mike's case, the ankle, the mus- a muscle of the ankle, right? The ligaments of the ankle. The deltoid, yeah. Yeah. There's not – it's not guaranteed that player or, you know, just in any anybody, you know, if they have surgery to repair ligaments or muscles – it's not guaranteed to, to function the same after surgery, you know, right. to where if you naturally rehab and let it heal on its own, the numbers say you're, the, the odds are better to be a full functional strength as if before the injury. Sure. Now, my biggest issue with this is, I mean, you know, number one, why weren't the Saints also checking in up on Michael Thomas and the doctors? and Because it... That's the thing. When you schedule a doctor's appointment, they text or call you. They, they, they do that with regular, you know, it's regular, quote, civilians like us. We'll get texts and calls and say, hey, you know, your appointment's this day. You got to come in. Did Michael Thomas not get any of those? Did the Saints not not check in on anything to make sure that he went back in March to get it checked out? And, and I- by the way, when the doctor and, – and the Saints have had problems with team doctors in the past in terms of <laughs> not properly – giving the right uh injury diagnosis diagnosis Mm -hmm. that's the word i was looking for thank you diagnosis Mm -hmm. when they look i mean can't they i mean granted obviously they're given the benefit of the doubt and and a month time in between they're like okay if he comes back in a month we'll be able to for sure know but when you look at that in february can't you know that it's either going to need surgery or it's not going to need surgery especially when you you messed it up earlier in the year you came back messed it up even more Yes, and then he was not he was not himself in the in the playoffs either. And Mm-mm. I mean I mean you can kind of, you can kind of tell obviously it's it obviously got a lot of attention from other teams in the playoffs and that and, and that obviously will lead to lower numbers but he, he he didn't fully look like himself and it's because of the high ankle injury. Now in June he gets the surgery and multiple reports are saying, you know, he'll be out through October. Multiple reports that I'm seeing are saying it's a six to eight week recovery just to walk again or properly walk again. Then it's another six to eight weeks just to get back in football playing. So if you were taking the minimum, let's say it's six weeks for both, Mm -hmm. 12 total weeks, that's three months. That's him out June. So so that's him through through October, essentially, right? June, uh, June, July, um, August. And then, you know, sep- September will be a wash, and then you maybe come back in. But if he's that's missing the full... Case. That's best case scenario. If he's coming back, then he's going to be out through possibly November and, and a majority of the season. And that's if the surgery was, you know, proper in, in June, which I don't know. We haven't had or seen any follow-ups 
about the surgery since. But again, the news of the surgery from June broke on July 23rd. So since we didn't know about that follow-up in March until Nick Underhill reported it, since we didn't know the surgery was in June until it was reported yesterday by Ian Rappaport, the Saints are doing a really good job at keeping doors closed. They're doing a really good job at not letting stuff leak out, and stuff finally has come out, and now we're all very confused because we didn't know any of this information even a couple of days ago, and now all this comes out at once. It's very easy to point fingers and put blame, but at the end of the day, we have to look at the situation and go, this is just the football gods going against the Saints once again. <laughs> that's 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 what you got to chalk it up to, man. I mean, this is just unprecedented stuff that's going on. Now, also, um, he, uh, Mike Florio, or whoever wrote that Pro Football Talk article, also mentioned all the, the rifts and the tensions between Michael Thomas that has happened with the team, which, by the way, he is out feeding 500 people right now down in um, in the New Orleans area. Um, which is hats off to Michael Thomas. Everything he's been going through, still doing that. Um, but at the end of the day, when I look at this, obviously I think the football gods are kind of punishing. Maybe it's Roger Goodell. Roger Goodell could be behind this as well. At the end of the day, though, why I blame the Saints more than anybody, more than anything, is because when you have an investment in one of the best players in your franchise history – and one of the best at his position in the league, mm-hmm. somebody you've you've get, you, you have committed nearly a hundred million dollars to. If we're talking about guaranteed, obviously it's less, but his contract for uh, north of a hundred million dollars. If you are committing that much money and that much time to this guy who has also committed so much time and effort to you, I mean, Michael Thomas has been on this team for for over five years now. And you can't even follow up on a appointment with him a month later for a very serious injury that kept him out of a lot of last season and is one of the reasons why the Saints were unable to take that next step. What are we doing? What, what, is, what is up with a simple text or a phone call to make sure things get done right? Or did the team really not know? And if that's the case, they're still to blame because they should be on top of everything regardless. It's either they didn't know he was supposed to have a follow-up, which is, you know, poor look on the team and the doctor who, who didn't say anything and Michael Thomas, or they knew and they decided to not follow up until June and then things got done. And, and they only knew that he needed surgery because he showed up to camp late, by the way, showed up to camp, and they said that his ankle was in bad shape, even though Sean Payton had said, so far, so good in an interview last week, I believe it was. So this is all very confusing. Everything has been behind closed doors for a long time. We're finally getting all of this information. It's very overwhelming at the point. And at the end of the day, there's still a lot of... The the biggest question is still unanswered. When will we see Michael Thomas again? We don't know. Yeah, and I mean, you know, had Mike Thomas went and got this done in March just to, you know, be done with it, He's probably ready to go by training camp, right? Mm-hmm. That's safe mm-hmm. to assume. And yes, you know, I, I gotta think when you're a professional sports team, right? You know, and your players go see these out of team doctor specialists, you know, who are renowned nationwide for, you know, right? Uh, you know, there's James Anderson up there in Wisconsin who does, you know, a lot of the ACL work on players. You know, when yeah. you go, when you when a play when you when a player as as you mentioned, high profile. You know, obviously one of your most beloved players in the franchise and, uh, you know, one healthy, one of the the best at his position in the NFL. You would think that, you know, your team would do the most they can to follow up and make sure that he, that guy is good to go and, you know, and, you know, w- would like to be updated step by step on the process, right? Yeah. You would think that. So, you think. I mean, is that you too would. crazy to think, Alec? I mean, you are, are think. we crazy here? Are we no, crazy here no. for thinking that? No, I mean, and uh, you know, and I see a lot of people on Twitter talk about this. You know how the Saints really fumbled. You know, they dropped it on this one because you know had they had done their due diligence, you know, leading up into uh, this entire process with Mike Thomas and you know this ankle, you know, this is something that could have been avoided altogether, mm-hmm. and you know. I don't, I don't want to pin it on Mike Thomas or anything, but I mean, dude, I mean, ultimately, it's your body. You know how that he, ankle feels. He deserves only, some blame for sure. Yes, o- only, yes. only he knows truly if that ankle needed surgery or not. Yes, you know. Yeah. What? Yeah. Was he? Was he? 
not working out during the offseason because his ankle hurt so bad and he just decided to never go back to the doctor. I mean, that's a, that's a whole other thing as well. It's like, yeah. did he work out we, at all this offseason? Because if he did, he would know, right? Yeah, in, in the report Nick Hunter will put out, it, it stated that they told Mike Thomas, give it some time, rehab yes. and rest it. And they for a month. Come back for a follow-up and we'll go from there. And Mike Thomas never came back for that follow-up. They said a month and he heard five months somehow. Or four months, sorry, between February and June. But, I mean... Which still makes it, no sense. Which which still doesn't make any sense. Um, but, yeah, he, he definitely deserves some blame. Um, and, and, yeah, it's like, maybe, I, I, I guess the other possibility that we aren't, you know, fully diving into is that he, maybe there's there's a possibility it, that he, March, he goes to the checkup, understand. He said, you know what, yeah, could be okay. Rest it for another month, we'll come back. Let's say then he rests for another month. They look at it and they said, you know, it's going to be fine. Starts working out, injures it again in June, and then has to get the surgery. That is a small possibility that that happens because I, I just, I just can't see him not working out over this over the off season at all. Right. And 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 if the ankle is as bad as they were saying, then then there's no yeah. way he did work. And out, and, right? and, and, and if I'm right here, I think they. Uh... I was skimming through the, the, the Forio piece, and, you know, there was a quote that said that it was probably deemed the ankle was going to have to sur- have surgery done at the end of the year. Yeah. So right. I'm, I, I'm just thinking, you know, if you think it's possible, and I, I understand, you know, as a, as a well, first of all, I was a high school athlete, and I was a scrub. There you go. I was, I was, still counts. I, I, I was, I, I, still counts. I, I'm a scrub. Let me put that out there first, people. I was not good. But I've had surgeries uh, it, it, uh, after I've done both ways. I've actually I, I've rested and rehabbed, and I've had surgery. And I will tell you, it is different. Mm-hmm. You know, when you have them going there and 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 you know repair ligaments uh, and do all the all the doctor stuff. I don't know what all they do, but it, it is not the same natural feeling. So I'm I'm sure if I was Michael Thomas and you know his game is built on rock running, being a technician, being precise. So you need to cut and turn and pivot. Like like on a dime, right? Yes. With the ankle, so I understand why you take the chance and wait it out. And no matter how you cut it up, this is a bad look for the Saints, for Michael Thomas, for everybody, all involved. Really, there's no clear cut way to look at this to go, oh, you know, okay, this is this is understandable. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But ultimately, that is where we are, we are where we are at now with. Yeah, this we're going to be without Michael Thomas. The Saints had released Emmanuel Sanders earlier this offseason because of the cap. Uh, Drew Brees retired, so we don't even know who the quarterback is yet. Yet, whoever, and I'll say this right now on this podcast, without my hell, even with Michael Thomas, the Saints have one of the, if not the worst, wide receiver groups yes. in the NFL. I, I don't, yeah. I don't understand why people think that Jameis and or Taysom, hell, hell, Taysom probably is these. Second best receiver on this roster, if right. he, I, I well, would <laughs> jokes yes. aside, ter- he, well, no, for sure. I mean, red zone threat, absolutely. But th- but still, the fact that the team's backup quarterback is being yeah. seriously talked about as a legitimate receiving option should speak to how bad our wide receivers are. It's not a bad idea either to play him at receiver. I, 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 I it's exactly. Not it's, it, I, I think I think he would thrive as yes. He's a big. He's huge, and he and and and, and he's fast. He 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 can run very well. And I mean, for people to come out and confidently say, "Oh, Marquez Callaway, Traquan Smith, you know Deontay Harris," they could come out here and you know, uh, put up put up some numbers. But in reality, it's like no, this is not a good wide receiver core. Okay, yeah. it's a bunch of unproven, undrafted guys, I might add. I mean, look, I love Marquez Callaway as much as the next person. But he went undrafted for a reason, right? He was a guy who, you know, teams pass on him in the draft. He And let me ask you, realistically speaking, you know, half these, hell, all these receivers outside of Mike Thomas, they're probably not even making the roster on most of these NFL rosters. They're probably not. The only guy I could tell you probably would would be Deontay Harris because of his uh, yes. his punt return skills and speed. Period. And speed. Yes. And, and maybe Traquan is a fourth or yeah. third receiver on an NFL team. Besides that, none of these other guys are making a roster. And for these really good teams, guys like Deontay and Traquan aren't making a roster. I'm sorry, it's just yeah. not going to cut it. And for the Saints to know 
what was going on with Mike Thomas or to just find out and to only address the wide receiver position by drafting K1 Baker, mm-hmm. which again, I love the potential, but that's all it is. It's frustrating. Like how 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 are we gonna go out there and leave our quarterback hanging dry with these receivers? Because look, yeah, Breeze won games last year with this core. That's great, but that's because Breeze has been in this offense for fifteen plus years. He knows everything about this offense. He's seen NFL defense. He can put these guys in the position to succeed. Jameis and Taysom can't. They just have not been here long enough, nor had the experience in the NFL in general to I think put those receivers in the best position like Breeze has. Well, yeah, it really makes me curious what they knew in April. And how long they had known. During the draft of the situation of Michael Thomas. I think if they really knew... Because I mean, remember, they wanted Terrence Marshall in the second round. Sure, sure. Which which he, he got drafted before they even fell. The Panthers, so, the Panthers you know, skanked yeah, them, but... Right. But, I mean, there are options out there. I like Golden Tate. I mean, because no nobody else on this roster can get separation... And, and almost nobody in the league can get separation like Michael Thomas in, in space. I mean, the dude can get separation in a phone booth. Great route runner. Golden Tate is a free agent right now, and I think he's one of those guys that can do that. His, his yard after catchability is great, and he's got really good quick feet, good route running skill. I think that that would be a good option. Also, guys like Kenny Stills are out there. He's obviously more of a vertical threat type guy, uh, former Saint, of course. Um, so there's options out there to improve this in the time, but overall, the big blow is that our number one wide receiver we are going to be without again. Uh, and, and by the way, also David Onyemata, other options, Kawan Short and Geno Atkins both got medically cleared. They yep. are possibly veteran guys to fill that spot. So the Saints have options to look at for both of these absences, but again, they're, they're, they're short-term, not long-term. You have to figure something out, and it's like, do we decide to go that route? They still have, they have cap room to sign some guys. It's very little cap room, but they got cap room to get some vet minimum deals going. So I really hope something like that happens. Which and and let me ask you this too, to mm-hmm. to kind of recap all this Michael Thomas talk and, and why why I, I think the Saints are most to blame. Do you you ever watch show Bar Rescue or like Kitchen Nightmares or anything like that? Yeah, I've watch seen it. Yeah, Impossible? yeah, I know I know what it's about. The people that get the most blame, deservedly so, despite the staff being so poor, mm-hmm. you know, the, the bartenders or or the waiters and waitresses just having terrible customer service skills. And the food being terrible because the cooks don't clean the kitchen or do anything. The person that gets the most blame, and rightfully so, every time, is the owner. And it's because they are supposed to be overwatching all this. And I'm not saying the Saints owner specifically gets blame. But the on, whoever in the Saints organization is supposed to be overlooking Michael Thomas and these surgeries for the guys, they are they should, rightfully so, get the most blame in this situation. You should be on top of that. You should be watching at all times. You should be understanding what is going on before anybody else without being told. Like, they need to figure this stuff out without being spoon-fed information. That is their job 24-7, and somebody dropped the ball real bad. Michael Thomas obviously deserves blame. But at the end of the day, you always got to blame the overseer, the supervisor, the person who is supposed to be making sure the ship is sailing correctly. And yep. that didn't happen in the situation, and now we all suffer. And it sucks really bad. Yeah. And now this offense, I seriously question if this offense can, you know. Alvin Kamara MVP season. It's even more so now. I it, mean, come it, on. It, it better because uh, some notable wide receivers will throw out the there real quick. Golden Tate, as you mentioned, a guy that you were very high on. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald has not announced whether he's retiring or not. He may be. He's a veteran guy that you would like to bring in to coach up some of these young cats. Uh Denny Amendola, Des Bryant, Josh Gordon, um, maybe Dosh, Josh Doxson, uh, D.D. Westbrook would be nice. However, there was word that, you know, Minnesota and I believe Seattle, there's another yes. there's another team visiting yep. with him as well. Minnesota and Seattle were the yeah. two teams, yeah. So, uh, you know, there are some options. But, again, let me say to you people, this is not a good wide receiver room, okay? And especially if you, t- if you put Taysom or Jameis out there with these guys, it's not going to be fun because most of these cats, most of these cats are don't even make half the damn roster in the NFL. 
All right. And that's the Saints' MO with receivers, too. A lot, is, a lot it, of the receivers they have are typically guys who just never end up making the Saints uh, another team roster. Yeah, and and that was, and the problem is the last couple of years it was Mike Thomas, and that was it. Exactly. Right. So now we have nothing. So, And we'll talk about that in the next episode, so be yeah. sure to tune in. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be for a more, fun. For more miserable Saints talk. More miserable wide receiver talk, to be there more specific. Go. Yes, more specific. Um, and as you mentioned, Dane, some of the, the guys maybe we can look at to fill in um, for David Onyemata would be Geno Atkins, K1 Short, both of them medically cleared now to uh, resume football activities. That certainly could be interesting. Um, Jarrell Decent Casey. Run support guys. Yeah. And I, I like Jarrell Casey. A yeah, lot too. Jarrell Casey, former Titan, was with the Broncos. Um, this uh, past season, I believe. Yeah, yeah, had an off year, so, but. Yeah, still so, decent player. Still decent yeah, player. I bring all three of those guys yeah, in in a heartbeat. Absolutely. To pair up with, uh, you know, uh, Shy Tuttle, Tuttle Malcolm right? Roach. Shy Tuttle, yeah. Maybe those guys maybe you look at Lorenzo Neal Jr. He probably now makes the roster. There you go. So there hey, you go. It's gonna. <laughs> what a way to start the post Drew Brees era, right? Yeah. We when we had consistency with Brees, now we have uncertainty and pretty much the exact opposite of consistency. So, um, that's going to do it for this episode, I believe. You got anything on the other day? Oh, no, that's it. No, thank you guys think, for uh, listening and, and going through this journey with us. Yeah, I think we hit everything we needed to. Um, having said that, make sure you follow us on Twitter at uh, SaintsFPC. We'll post all our episodes there. Uh, we're in for the ride with you guys. It's going to be a very, very long off season and training camp still is right around the corner. So uh, next episode, we'll discuss the wide receiver group, which is ironic considering the news now. So uh, it's going to be fun, right? Yes. Either way, <laughs> either way, we're going to have fun. We'll so, find a way to have fun. Right. So uh, that's the wrap of this episode. Um, and then stick around for the next episode. We'll preview wide receivers for our saints. 53 man roster. <laughs>